The next model magic jack. Let's call it Soho, keep it pretty much the same, but fix some things that could be better. Hi, I'm Chris with Laughter on Water. Join me as we explore what Magic Jack could do to make their next product better. I rely on Magic Jack every day to provide phone service for about $36 per year. What I like about it is that it's pretty transparent. If I didn't tell anyone, you would think it was just a landline. It just does its thing in the background, and when I need it, it's there. It doesn't use a lot of power, and it keeps my communications costs to a minimum. That said, Magic Jack could use some improvements. There are some things that users are constantly frustrated about. A few simple changes could make this device even more useful and more transparent. Here's a little bit of history regarding Magic Jack devices. First, there was the original Magic Jack, which was USB only. This device is still probably in operation for some people, but requires you to leave a computer on all the time to use it. That was a power waste. Still, if you were willing to pay a few extra bucks a month in electrical costs to keep a computer going with a Magic Jack attached, it was a great VOIP alternative to the traditional phone service. The next version was the Magic Jack Plus 2012. That's the one I bought first. That was a well-designed device with regards to form factor and appeal, but the product was brittle and had volume and overheating problems with some customers. Its best attribute was that it had an Ethernet port, so it could be connected directly to your router, rather than connecting full-time to a computer. It was a revolution for VOIP in that it packaged what had previously been a landline-only service in a portable, physical device. It was one of the first devices that blurred the line between phone service and physical device. The third product was the Magic Jack Plus 2014, which was supposed to offer an array of additional capabilities via various ports and add-ons on the side of the product. It was bigger, but still had the same problems with volume control and overheating that some customers saw in the Magic Jack Plus 2012. During this time, the company was still owned by the original device creator. He attempted to package a lot of hopes and dreams into this one device, but they never came to fruition because he bit off a little more than he could chew. It was a functional machine with a lot of question marks. I still have one, and it still works, but the USB ports and SDIO port add no real value, and frankly never will. After about a year, the Magic Jack Plus 2014 was dropped from production. The one great takeaway from this product was its diagnostic lights. You could tell more information from the three lights on the front of the device than you could from the single light port on the front of the Magic Jack Plus 2012. The next product was the Magic Jack Go. The company probably saw the Magic Jack Plus as a lead balloon, offering too many unfulfilled promises. It was time to trim the sails and offer a product that came back to the original design mission, simplified VOIP. It probably has the same innards as the Magic Jack 2012, except with plastic housing and blue trim. It still has the same problems with overheating and sound volume as with the Magic Jack 2012, and still uses a single diagnostic light port on the front. At about the same time this product was put out, the website improved drastically. It became less web kitsch and folksy, and more streamlined and professional. Pulling back to create the Magic Jack Go and changing the website were probably the two best things that Magic Jack did at the end of 2014. The last device that was introduced was the Magic Jack Express, which has already stopped production for various likely reasons listed in a previous post. Check it out here. But we're halfway through 2017 now. The only physical VOIP device currently offered on its site is the Magic Jack Go, which is three-year-old technology. That's fairly ancient in tech years. But the nice thing about the Magic Jack Go is that it doesn't really need to evolve or change much. The focus of simplified VOIP is still on mission. WiMAX and Vocaltech are still in business and still offer a reasonable phone service if you're not in a town with blocked exchanges, and you need voice service to connect with friends or business associates most anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Yes, the original owner was a genius at design, but can the current owners match him for ingenuity? It may be less about innovation and more about making the product more robust and reliable. These are my suggestions for what needs to happen in the next version of Magic Jack. 
Call it Magic Jack Soho, an acronym for small office slash home office. Make it bigger. It doesn't have to be a lot bigger. It just needs to be big enough to hold a second phone port and have better heat dissipation. It doesn't have to be tiny because the object is not for it to be used on the go. It's part of a small slash home office environment. I suspect most Magic Jack Go devices that are used in any continuing capacity are used in just this fashion. A slightly larger device will be less likely to get lost in a drawer or in a backpack. Add an aluminum heatsink. Put it right on the front face of the design, pushing through the housing so the heat dissipates more adequately. Highlight the heat sink instead of trying to hide it. Anodize it with a bright color, perhaps red. What seems at first to be an ugly thing becomes part of the attraction and shows that Magic Jack has heard its users. Make settings accessible from the intranet. The NetTalk Duo 2 brought this to their product at about the same time that Magic Jack Plus 2014 came out. There is no reason why a password-protected intranet interface could not be made available to the owner of the Magic Jack device. A responsive, mobile-ready interface would allow for a number of important features to be added to the Magic Jack Soho. Most of the people who read my blog or watch my videos have problems with volume. They can barely hear the other person, or the other person can barely hear them. Imagine being able to control the volume of your Magic Jack's mic and earpiece while the Magic Jack is connected directly to the router from your browser. This would solve the bulk of users' issues with Magic Jack. Amplifying the volume means adding more power to the Magic Jack interface. That might seem to be a challenge given that we have only a USB adapter's power to work with, but the device probably is set to use only a small portion of the power available in a USB adapter because of the overheating issues in the current design. With a large heatsink, more of the available power can be used without overheating the device. Local call blocking. I get a lot of spam calls. I'd like to be able to block those calls from the Magic Jack when they call repeatedly from the same number. I would like the option to block anonymous calls too. It would be even better if block calls received a no longer in service tone. This is a special tone used by call centers to keep from calling a number when it's out of service. You're basically fooling spammers into removing you automatically from their lists. Call blocking could be available via local intranet access. A user could block the most recent caller with star six seven from the phone or edit more particularly from a call history on the device's local web interface from a browser. Round Robin Local Call History. This would provide a downloadable list of calls, times, durations, whether it's ingoing or outgoing, and whether the caller was blocked. History could be set to show all calls, or only blocked calls, missed calls, or successful calls. As suggested above, a button would be available next to each unblocked number that would allow you to block the caller next time. Higher REN cutoff. The ringer equivalency number on Magic Jack Go is about 2.1. If you have one or more phones totaling more than that number connected to the device, your phone won't ring. Even so, some people with modern phones that have low RENs or an REN of zero sometimes have trouble getting their phones to ring. Adding a bit more power to the ring tip might go a little further in solving the next most popular reason why people are challenged by Magic Jack. Better insulation against power and Ethernet noise. People often have trouble getting the device to work because their power has noise that conflicts with the Magic Jack. The problem can often be solved by plugging Magic Jack into a wall socket on a different fuse line or by changing brands or models of uninterrupted power supply UPS, or adding a switch between the router and the Magic Jack. In other words, insulation against power and Ethernet noise and surges needs to be more robust in the Magic Jack Soho. Add an e-ink mini screen. The screen could contain pertinent device information such as phone number, phone contract end date, what the phone is currently doing, and any diagnostics that might help both the user and the chat support technician. 
My virtual example shows icons and text codes that you might see on an e-ink screen. The e-ink screen would have the additional benefit in that it would show the current phone number and service end date even when the device is off. If e-ink proves too expensive, an OLED monochrome screen might just suffice. Add a second phone line option. Some people might like to have Magic Jack with two lines, one for home and one for business. Rather than buying two Magic Jacks, you could buy a single device and add a second line optionally via the Magic Jack website. What would the new device cost? It should come with service for one year for one phone line and should initially cost about $20 to $10 more than the Magic Jack Go. After all, some people aren't going to keep two lines continually. If it's too complicated to add a second line, then even a device with just one phone jack and all the other fixes could make for a much more rewarding experience with Magic Jack. Those are my suggestions for the Magic Jack's next model. I'd like to hear your suggestions in the comments below. This is Chris with Laughter on Water. Thanks for watching.